welcome, welcome to the January the 23rd, 1996 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie. As we bring you the history of our city and some of the people that have helped to make that history. We're doing a very special spotlight on the City Council of PTAs as they celebrate their 50th anniversary. And this is our segment number two as we feature some of the past presidents. This is our history tape number 268 and we are very excited to have three very special ladies with us today, all past presidents. And first of all, we're going to bring forward uh, the 11th president of the City Council of PTAs since its organization in 1945 and we're very pleased to have Mrs. Harry Victor Taylor, lovingly known as Bobby, on the set today. Welcome to the set today, Miss Bobby. Thank you, dear. We're just so glad to have you with us. Well, I'm glad to be here. Wonderful. And next we will be featuring on our interview Mrs. Howard Alta Brown, who was our 18th president. Welcome, Alta. Thank you. <laughs> and way across the room, Mrs. Jean Arnold Simpson, and we're so glad, Jean, to have you with us as the 19th president of the City Council of PTAs. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Right? Wonderful. And y'all all look so pretty, all of the reds and the greens and the blue. Christmas. Yes, yes. And it, it's, Christmas has just passed, and y'all are a real good uh, uh, holiday present for us. The fact that y'all will come and help us really document this wonderful history of the City Council of PTAs. And Miss Bobby, to get you off the hot seat first and foremost, uh, and since it's protocol always to start with the probably the senior member on, on oh, the I'm dais sure here today. <laughs> <laughs> and next to me, you're the senior member on the dais, but would you tell us a little bit about your tenure? I believe you served two years uh, as the City Council PTA president, and do you know what years you served? Uh, 56 and 7, 57 and 58. All right. I think the most outstanding thing I did was help launch some Grand Prairie leaders. Uh, PTA leadership training is invaluable. You see people everywhere. Uh, all these smart people here have been president about everything in town. Some of them even on the City Council. But we started off uh, in 57, that was, a good, that was a good year for the City Council. And it was a good year for all of us, for that matter. It was a good year for, for the United States, to tell you the truth. We had all been through a, a war and a depression, and we were ready to enjoy the good life. The baby boomers were in junior high school, and they were hopping around to rock and roll with their crew cuts and their ponytails. And uh, Grand Prairie had just grown from about 15, uh, 1,500 to 15,000 overnight, and the natives weren't too excited over having all these. You think the natives were restless? They were, of because of the, all this dislocated uh, eager beavers coming into their town, taking everything over. Yeah. I don't really blame them a whole lot. Oh. Uh, and the city council PTA was, had a, was just getting a good start. Who was the superintendent of schools when oh, you were? Mr. Chambers, Mr. and there's no H doubt about it. All right. He okay. was also the, probably the dictator of the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> we all bowed down to Mr. Chambers. That's, there's a little story here I want to tell you that makes that kind of funny. All right. Uh, the, they had allowed the uh, president, principals to attend, and not that they did, but they would come by for coffee and chit chat. I don't think they took us very seriously in those days, but we, we soon got them settled down. Yes. I don't think, uh, well, one of the events of that year, and I didn't, I didn't notice it in the history, and you, since you didn't ha do it, you might not have remembered it. We uh, organized the first uh, local unit Bonham Elementary School, uh -huh. and uh, Dr. Bruce Younger, uh, he's not a doctor, I'm giving him a new title. A new title. Yeah. He was a former principal of uh, Crockett School, and he was elected the principal, and he, he was used to PTA answering him, not some something called a city council PTA, what's that, you know? Yes. And uh, But we prevailed, and we went down and did a real good job, and he was very relieved. He hovered over us like a mother hen. But we, we got through it, and that was one of our first projects. And I, I was impressed with that because it took some doing to get, it, get them to let us do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they didn't think we could. Yes. And, uh, 
And one of the outstanding memories I have of this year was a project that the PA, PTA didn't get to sponsor. Uh, most of you all are too young to remember the terror we felt at the polio days, but you probably do. You yes. Might. Do you all remember when it happened? You bet. Uh -huh. Oh, and how relieved we were when Dr. Sock invented that vaccine. Well, one of our young presidents, I think it was James Sproles, discovered that we could get free vaccine if we would administer it. Well, we happy days we could do that with one hand tied behind us. But uh, somebody reported this to the school administration, and they weren't so sure we could. So, much to the shock and surprise, the entire school administration and every principal in town showed up at the PTA meeting. And <laughs> when the subject was introduced, uh, uh, Mr. Chambers got up and said he didn't think the PTA was appropriate one to sponsor it and that we'd just encourage it instead of sponsoring it. Well, you can imagine the reaction of the young presidents who were real eager to get this yes. shots going. So one of them jumped up <laughs> and said, I don't know who this gentleman is, which was a, a gasp went around the room. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't think of anyone any more appropriate to uh, sponsor this, uh, the vaccine and the teachers and the parents. Well, the very idea of her not knowing Mr. Chambers was enough to end Kind of that put us well, in that, shock, that put a little, little sense of humor in the situation. It probably didn't add to our credibility, but yes. it was funny. So we were highly indignant about this turn of events, and we told them, I told them staff at the meeting, and we'd discuss it. So uh, of course we decided to do it anyway, and we're the only people in town that could. So I uh, elected to find a sponsor and a place to do it, and had somebody else was going to get the people the doctors and nurses together to give the shot. Somebody's going to go get the vaccine. You know how we do in PTA. That's it. So uh, you organize for for uh, for that uh, that period of time. Uh, Mr. Dean Dolly was our city manager, and he happened to be an old family friend of mine. And I went up and put all my troubles on him, and he let us have the little white building out behind the uh, city hall. You all remember it used to have the library, and he said the junior chamber of commerce would would sponsor us. Well, we got together, and in no time at all, we had this thing on the way, and it was such a stunning success. It, it surprised everybody, including us, I think. Anyway, you never saw so many people with their arms held out for a shot. We did over 6,000. You remember? Yes, six, yes. 6,000 shots. That, but that, uh, well, it proved without a doubt that the membership of the PTA could really add a lot if they made up their minds to do it. And it probably convinced the administration that the principal should attend the city council PTA just to keep an eye on us. They probably thought we had a tiger by the tail. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the follow-up was held in the high school, so they they went along with us. Yes. Uh, and maybe we went up a little in their estimation. I can't, uh, in 1958, I can't remember a lot about uh, the PTA that year, but boy, I know I never had so many upsetting personal experiences in my entire life. First, we sold a business downtown and, and moved the house to another location and remodeled it. That's enough for one year. We bought a new home and sold the one we lived in. That's another traumatic experience. Then this resulted in moving my daughter from Jefferson to Lee. And if anybody's ever done that, they know that's... And you would give us your daughter's name for this record? Harriet Elder. Harriet Taylor, Taylor Elder. Elder. Okay, now we have it documented. <laughs> well, we'd been planning a vacation trip to South America for about two years by the cur well, the courtesy of Brandon Fairways, my husband's employee. But the trick was that we had to furnish our own uh, paperwork. We had to do the visas, the shots, the international health card, all these things. And it had taken about two years to get this set up, so we couldn't. We just had to do it. Besides, who's going to turn that down, you know? Yes. So, but, and to top this off right at the last minute, we, had, we were the unexpected host to a house party for my husband's brother-in-law who was receiving an doc, honorary doctorate degree and we had people coming from Alaska, California, uh, Georgia, all over the world and I didn't even have my grapes up. But that was all right. But that was all right. But you were still working with the PTA, I was, right? I never missed a meeting. Okay. Thanks, but I had a lot of good help. I had Ruthie Jackson. 
And I think maybe if I've never done anything else in this world, if I helped launch Ruthie Jackson to the city of Grand Prairie, I did my bit, right? That's wonderful. Uh, we're going to get back with you in a few minutes to wrap up uh, some more about that, but we're going to let you rest a minute because I want you to uh, name, name drop a few of the people that you worked with, and, and then we're going to come back, and I want you to tell just a little bit about what brought you to Grand Prairie, Texas, because we haven't established that yet. Alta, starting out with you, what brought you to Grand Prairie, Texas? You'll never believe it. Beachy uh, uh, Comas was our principal. He wouldn't believe me. Yes. We moved to Grand Prairie because that's where we could get a telephone. Yeah, <laughs> moved to Grand Prairie. Honest, honest. Oh, that is why. And every time I told him that, he'd say, didn't you move here because of the plan? I said, no, Mr. Combs, we moved because we could get a telephone, and I was pregnant with Linda that year. Yes, and yeah. Linda is, was your first daughter. No, she's our second she's daughter. She's your second daughter. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, name your first daughter, too, that you lost to death. Uh, Shirley Jean Brown Floyd. All right. So you had two wonderful daughters, and that's what kept you in the PTA, wasn't that's it? That's right. Mm -hmm. And where did you start out in the PTA working? At, at Lamar School. At Lamar mm -hmm. School. Started out at Lamar School and then worked your way on up through Jefferson, Jefferson. And High School mm -hmm. and then City Council. Who was the principal at Lamar when y'all started out? Uh, B.G. Combs. B.G. Combs. Mm -hmm. And then on to Jefferson. Do you remember the principal there? When either oh, of the girls oh, went, uh, that's too far this, back. Yeah, no, it was it was uh, uh, Irvin Whit. Irvin Whit, mm -hmm, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then on to Grand Prairie High School, who who was the principal when oh, your girls were Tom, there? Tom, uh, Tom, or Tom, Tom Holly. Tom Holly. Uh -huh. Yes. I remember her. Mm -hmm. I think I. Installed yeah, she installed it. me every time. Uh -huh. Every time she uh, took an office. Uh, you got to install her. She, she got to install her. Uh -huh. that she couldn't really do all uh -huh. that without if, my blessing. If Bobby didn't install me. Oh, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then on from Grand Prairie High School, uh, were you president of any of those PTAs? I was president of Lamar. All right. But I didn't, I wasn't president of, Hugh, of uh, Jefferson or all high right. school. Our high school. Mm -hmm. But then you jumped all the way through the Tracys and then were president of the city council of PTAs. Mm -hmm. Who was the superintendent when you were Doing that, Mr. Mr. Chambers. Mr. Chambers Both. was still it. Oh, <laughs> still that here. is great. Yes, uh -huh. and, and during your year of uh, City Council of PTAs, what were your years since you were the 19th president? Uh, 67, 68, and 69. I did two years. You did two years. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, who were some of the outstanding people that served with you? Would you like to talk about them or tell what you Gene did? Gene Arnold. <laughs> oh. Jean Arnold was one of them, okay. And of course you. Yes. And uh, let's see. Uh, well, uh, Ann Dameron, Virginia Carter. Yes. Lee Fines, Marcy Cup, and, and, uh, and then Marie Gaines, and, uh, Francis Williams, Miss Otis Williams, and Jean McCoy. Yes. And, well, uh, you had you had a lot. I had a good group. You had a lot group. of help, didn't now, you? Listen, I could have done it without them. I had a good group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, of all group. of the things you did during those two years, I see that you brought all of your history books. Yes, uh -huh. Hold one of those up. I don't know whether anyone in our viewing audience has ever seen a Texas PTA history book, but that's just filled with goodies, it's, it isn't is, it? It is. I had good historians that made these. Okay, and one, and let's see. One was Lou Anderson, and let's see, uh, who was the other one? Lou Anderson uh, still lives. And uh, Cam, uh, Jean McCoy. And Jean McCoy. She's wonderful, your two wonderful. historians. Mm -hmm. And they put all of your publicity they put and all everything together, in yes, it. Uh -huh. All of the good stuff. Like the sea. Yes. Oh. Yes, sea. It's oh. got all the. Uh, has all your memorabilia. And, yes, everything. Oh, pictures, and look at the wonderful yeah, pictures of uh -huh. the past. Uh -huh. Oh, that will be invaluable someday. Oh. Uh, not only to you, but, but to, to Grand Prix mm -hmm. and to your kids mm -hmm. and grandkids. Great. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Now tell us some more about uh, some of the outstanding projects. Remember well, anything I think, that happened? Uh, two really important things, and I think one happened one year and one the next. The first year that I thought was really important was we uh, got the state to let Dalworth come in and, and join our P, our PT our city council PTA. Wonderful. And we always felt like that they need to be with us because they need all the information that we had. Yes. And with several calls to Austin and and uh, some kind, several letters, they we talked they the state it. in to let they approved them joining us. Yes. And uh, that was one year. And then the second year we organized the post PTA. Oh, that and, is right. That, yes, and you're uh, a member of the Post yes, PTA uh -huh. now. And, uh, mm -hmm. the Post PTA. Yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. It was Ruthie Jackson's idea. The 
Post PTA was your idea. We needed a PTA for those that had graduated from everything else. Mm -hmm. Right. We said, Ruthie said, well, uh, uh, all the people that have children out of school that are still interested in PTA need to have one of their own so that the young people can fill the jobs in, in you know, we can train the young people to fill the jobs mm -hmm. in the. Mm -hmm. For the you know the schools that their children go to. So of all, oh, that's one of your highlights. Uh, yes, I think that's the most important thing. The rest of it we the just first did. First in the state. Yes. Uh -huh. uh -huh. yes. yes. Uh -huh. I uh, I think that's the most important thing. The rest of it was things that we do all the time. You know. Yes. Uh -huh. just, we just our, our regular uh, yeah things that expected of us you know to do. Well now, um, since you lost your first daughter, but you now have grandchildren by your second daughter, and you better name drop all of those, Okay, you? my second daughter is Linda Joy Brown Sutton. All right. And and my favorite son-in-law is Larry Sutton. All right. I always tell everybody that, and he laughs yes. and says, I'm the only the one. The only one, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, my grandson that I bore people to death talking about is Sam Sutton. All right. Mm -hmm. And that just gives you just a lot to work for, doesn't it? Does. it? Uh -huh. Yes, no wonder you're a member of the Post PTA. You're still working for kids, and especially uh -huh. for for that grandson, aren't you? Uh, it's a great opportunity to see your old friends, in it? It is, Seth, that's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that might be more, I love to see everybody that we've known all through the years here in Grand Prairie, and if we don't go to church together, that's, we have to find some other way to meet with them. Well, you haven't even mentioned Howard. Oh. Let's, well, talk, let's talk about Howard a little bit. He aids and abets you at that post-PTA meeting all the time. He's I, a stem winder. Well, at the post-PTA, when I can't be there, I send him, and he does all my work for me. Would you tell me to whom the post-PTA dedicated their last yearbook for this last year? <laughs> to Howard and Al Brown. <laughs> Wasn't that exciting? It was. It was such a surprise. Yeah. I mean, I w here I was rushing like I always do. Probably late got in, and, uh, and it was so such a surprise. Yes, that's great. We really appreciate it. And we can still recognize those that continue to do things for boys and girls, even even though we're in a post-PTA condition, mm -hmm. right? We're going to get back with you in a few minutes, okay. Alta, a little bit more about, about your year and be thinking about something else you'd like to talk about, about the excitement of being the president for two years. And if you went to any of the district meetings, I want you to be oh. thinking about that and uh, some of the other things. And if you ever went to a state convention, and what happened? I cannot tell the, fu the funny things. About you can tell the funny things. Okay. Uh, you may have to cut it out. <laughs> uh, we may uh, edit that part edit out. Uh -huh. But let's go to Jean now. Jean Arnold Simpson, a, a past member of the Board of Education for the city of uh, Grand Prairie, Texas uh, School Board and the Grand Prairie ISD. And not only that, but the 19th president of the city council of PTA but just one year before you came into the city council PTA presidency how long have you lived in Grand Prairie? Since 1937. 1937 and mm -hmm. you came here with your parents? <laughs> right from Dallas mm -hmm. and it was uh, I guess we were just coming out of the depression yes the big depression yes. so um, I guess I put had my first roots here in Grand Prairie mm -hmm. and your was, first school you attended uh, Idlewild Elementary okay uh, seventh mm -hmm. grade mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, let's see what did I start oh well, I graduated from Grand Prairie High School and okay. both of my two sons Mike and Mark graduated from Grand Prairie High School and my husband was a graduate of Irving High School, and of course they were our mortal enemies in football. Oh, and, yes. <laughs> and that was Carl. And that was Carl, and he was uh, captain of the football team uh, his senior year, and uh, I met him the night of their football banquet. A friend of mine was a cheerleader from Irving, and she had a slumber party, and we were all invited. But um, Anyway, I became the council president then when Mike was in high school, the elder son, and he attended Fannin Jefferson Grand Prairie High, and then nine years later, Mark came along, and we moved, and so he attended uh, Houston, Austin, Eisenhower was a new elementary school, and we lived in the same house, and he attended all three elementary schools as they changed the district lines. <laughs> And that upset the mother, not the son, yeah, not but the, the son. mother. And then he were graduated from Grand Prairie High. Were you president of any of those PTAs along the way? Yes. Let's see. There was uh, 
Were you president at Fannin? Fannin Elementary, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure about Jefferson. <laughs> yes. And then uh, City Council PTA, uh, Austin PTA, and Adams Middle School. That, well, you've been yeah. president so many times, <laughs> and you've forgotten one of the most important. Post PTA. Post PTA, right. yes, you've been president of Post. And then uh, going back to my year, though, as council president, it was an exciting year. Uh, Carl was president of the Grand Prairie Quarterback Club, and I was president of the Gopher Mothers Club, and City Council PTA president as well. And uh, we had, out of 23 schools in Grand Prairie at that time, while well, we had a membership of 3,000, let's see, 5,340, and the population was only 50,904 in the whole city of Grand Prairie. So, that's a good indication. Good percentage, of, wasn't it? Good percentage of uh, active PTA members. Who were some of the people that worked with you uh, during your uh, year? Uh, Jean McCoy, Penny Penwell, okay. Virginia Carter, some of the same yeah. ladies, yeah. Sue Steele, Mary Nell Whit Whitty, Faye McPherson, Joanne Wright, and Louise Vance, and then a number of chairmen, Hazel Bland, um, Billy Thrasher, Louise Robinson, Jack Robinson, Joe Hendricks, M. Browning Combs was the superintendent. He followed uh -huh. Mr. Chambers. He followed Mr. Chambers. And uh, Hobbs Williams was uh, principal at Grand Prairie High at the time, and all the principals were very cooperative. Oh, you yes. did a good job getting them yeah, broken, in. broken in, <laughs> Bobby, well, because they, they, they recognized that we really we, could, we did good, good things. That we and, didn't have any problems. They right. That came from the uh, administration bill. One of the things that I was impressed was we had the District 2 conference was held in Dallas that uh -huh. year, and we had 46 attendees from, from Grand, Prairie? Grand Prairie to oh, that, that district uh, conference, and we were, very, we were recognized for having so many. We celebrated the state, uh, 60th, state PTA 60th birthday at, in Grand Prairie, and we planted a magnolia tree in honor of Mrs. L.A. Roberts, who was our very first, very first city member. council PTA president. Yes. And we were recognized for, we had 430 PTA members who completed a parent and family life education study course, and we monitored and uh, watched Sesame Street, and it was introduced for the on Channel 13, the very first, uh, that was in October of 69. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had people from, their, from the Sesame Street production that came to Grand Prairie and presented a, a slide presentation. And also the Head Start program. We had a lot of our mm -hmm. PTA members that yes. worked with the Head Start program. And both of those are still in existence mm -hmm. today. So I was real proud of that. David Daniels was chairman of that uh, study, life, parent and family life education. Uh, another big thing, um, George Poff presented the first place trophy which Grand Prairie received for its beautification efforts in the national cleanup program. And Ruthie was instrumental in introducing this program to our public school system and we had Every school participating, the students planted seeds, we packaged seeds, the city council members did for distribution to the schools, and uh, we got to go to Washington, D.C. with a delegation of about, I've forgotten, 17, about, about more than that, about, about 24, 24. people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that was, and we won our first trophy that year. We gave two scholarships, uh, Robert Hinckley from South Grand Prairie High and Jocelyn McLean at Grand Prairie High. And also one of our school teachers was a recipient of a state scholarship that year, Gary Keith Youngblood. Yes. And mm -hmm. most of you still remember him. Uh, another big thing our year, we uh, conducted a, an all-out war against pornography that was being uh, published in magazines in our local stores, and uh, I have letters from the congressman, from the police chief, from everybody, the mayor, uh, giving their support, and we organized uh, and had citywide meetings to try to, uh, we, 
were instrumental in getting the magazines removed from the uh, shelves where the school children could see them. They put them under the counter, <laughs> at least. But that war is still going on. Of course, it's accelerated. And that pretty much, I guess, sums up. Uh, oh, we awarded two life memberships, PT state memberships that year to George Poff and David Daniels. And uh, the school administration staff presented a national uh, PTA uh, life membership to Mr. Combs. Oh, that is great. Well, Jeannie, we're going to mm -hmm. put you on hold a minute. We have about two and a half minutes left, and we need to get back to Bobby because she's got to tell us about the most important thing to her other than the polio thing that happened during her year as council president because we, we sort of cut you off a little bit so we could round this thing out. I think, in my heart, the most important thing that I might have done during that myself personally was encourage the people that work with me. And I see these, some of these people, and I feel like you had, and Alka, and a whole lot of other people. And, and I looked down my list here. There was uh, Ms. Vernon Jackson, Ms. Otis Williams, Ms. Taggart, Ms. Harp, Ms. Green, Ms. Campbell, Ms. Armstrong. You all remember Helen Armstrong. Yes, oh, you bet. Oh, you she bet. was so devoted. And uh, there were just so many of these people that were so helpful to Grand Prairie, and I think encouraging. And I tried to do that all through my life in Grand Prairie. If I see a young leader that I think will be of some value to the city, I quietly, without their knowing it, if I can help it, try to push them and keep them encouraged. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really what we should do. Somewhere in this, I think one of our mentor somewhere said that it was our job as, as the presidents to encourage young leadership, and I really believe that's true. And I'm real proud of the people, and I always feel a little bit of a glow when I see somebody that I, whether they knew it or not, I'd pushed them from behind the scenes, and I really enjoyed it. Well, I want to thank you all for sharing with us this very short 30 minutes. I could have done 30 minutes with each of you individually, but this is just a short recap because Bobby left the City Council of PTAs to go on to be the most important contributor working for the Grand Prairie Memorial Library. And of course, uh, all of you all have done other things. Uh, Jean is president of the Women's Club this very day, this very minute. And <laughs> Alta's aiding and abetting Howard. And they hold up the First United Methodist Church and do good things for them and for the community. And, Y'all are just wonderful leaders uh, working for boys and girls and building leadership in Grand Prairie PTAs and, and throughout the years. And I want to thank you publicly, all of you, for your contributions. Thank you, dear. Thank you. And this is Ruth Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do.